Good afternoon, uh, good morning or good evening, wherever you are in the world. Um, so I'm Lauren de Gaia, and I'm just going to present a study that we conducted uh, with MSF in, uh, in DRC. So this is kind of two studies that were conducted simultaneously together, looking at the effectiveness of hygiene kit distribution to reduce cholera transmission. So just a note to the partners, our partners were the Ministry of Health, uh, MSF, uh, UNICEF and the London School, and you can see all of the associated individuals that we had partnering with us on this work. So um, I probably don't need to remind uh, many of you, but DRC uh, kind of accounts for five to 14% of the global cholera burden each year. You know, they're seeing roughly kind of 56,000 cases, uh, kind of up to 1,200 deaths. And that was just in 2017 alone. DRC experiences multiple cholera outbreaks annually, um, kind of exacerbated by the crisis that is affecting the country. Um, and so this study was kind of part of an emergency response um, by MSF in the country. Now, what we know from the evidence is that 80% of cholera transmission uh, is within the household. And that's predominantly from our kind of cases to our household contacts. And those household contacts are a hundred times um, greater risk of contracting cholera than those kind of outside of the house. And so we understand that that transmission, uh, as all of the other presentations today will talk about, is through that shared drinking water, kind of food, and any caring responsibilities that the household has. So we had two objectives for the, the kind of simultaneous studies that we conducted in DRC. First, we wanted to investigate the effectiveness of hygiene kit distribution combined with health promotion to reduce suspected cholera and self-reported diarrhea among household contacts of our suspected cholera patients. And that was those admitted to MSF uh, CTUs. And then we wanted to understand and identify any successes and barriers of hygiene kit distribution um, for cholera control, really kind of, kind of underpinning that delivery, uh, how the intervention was used, if it can be scalable, and then proposing recommendations to optimize future response mechanisms, both in country and elsewhere. So just to kind of highlight, um, DRC, uh, Kasai Oriental is in uh, southern DRC, and we uh, did this study in Kasansa district. So you can see here kind of the, the, the kind of cases uh, coming through on the map. Um, roughly 230,000 people in Kasansa district, uh, very low road access, uh, low social community status, and a limited number of healthcare facilities in the district. Um, Kasansa and Kasai Oriental, the, pro the province itself, had seen a really high burden of cholera in 2017 and throughout 2018. The outbreak that we're looking at in particular started on the 9th of August in 2018. So we had two studies that ran concurrently. First, we had a prospective cohort study, and second, we ran a, a process evaluation alongside it. Now, the, pro the cohort study, we enrolled cholera patients at the point of admission and their patient household sets, so everyone in their household, um, at the CTU. We collected baseline data from the, from the patients, their household contacts, and at the household within 48 hours, and then we revisited them after seven days. We analysed um, the data for the association of the hygiene kit use um, and any disease outcomes, so that was suspected cholera or self-reported diarrhoea, and then we also looked at any change or evolution in water and food contamination in that household from the point of enrolment up to day seven. Our process evaluation we ran concurrently and that kind of ex explored three different domains of process evaluations looking at implementation so what was delivered how was it delivered what were the kind of components of the kit and the components of the intervention secondly we looked at the participants response so how did the population respond to this intervention their satisfaction their barriers to use um, how was it maintained and you know potentially how sustainable it, it was and then lastly we looked at the context so thinking about what uh, kind of in the local context, at the national context, kind of, you know, environmentally, kind of epidemiologically, legally, politically, what, what kind of influenced the, the programme delivery and design. So data was collected um, back in 2018, so between October and then February 2019. In our prospective cohort study, we had 94 suspected cholera cases and their households. This led us to include 444 uh, household contacts. And then our process evaluation, we kind of took a sample of 27 households who had received the kit and we interviewed them. We, look, we also talked to all of the implementers, so 17 implementers, seven from MSF, uh, we had four local government respondents and six people from other NGOs. 
And then we analyzed a lot of program reports. So 34 in total, different data sets and program reports, trying to really piece together and understand what had been going on. And um, just to clarify, um, and in this study, uh, the hygiene kit was one hygiene kit per household, accompanied by you know, standard wash related health promotion messages. And this was delivered by community health workers to household contacts of patients on the day of patient admission. So a patient comes to the MSF supported CTU and they are admitted. And then their household contacts receives a demonstration by the community health worker at, at the CTU itself. Now the hygiene kit in this study and how MSF is defining a hygiene kit, it includes a 10 litre hand washing device, so a bucket with tap, um, a 20 litre jerry can, um, water treatment products, in this case it was Aquatabs or PNG purifier of water, and then one kilogram of soap. And you can see here on the two photos on the right, the top one is the community health worker kind of demonstrating and explaining the, um, the hygiene kit to the households, and then the bottom photo is the, is the kit and the general components of the kit. So um, data collection, what did we do? Um, at, for, the process, for the cohort study, uh, we did quantitative tools and lab, lab work. So we did household surveys, kind of understanding the wash conditions of the household at baseline, and then also kind of measuring uptake and use of the intervention. We had individual surveys. So with every individual household contact, we um, kind of asked them questions about themselves, their kind of standard demographic factors, and then also their, their self-reported clinical outcomes. So that's just a symptomatic cholera and or diarrhea. And then we also took samples of the water and food, both at baseline and the seven day enrollment to understand you know, environmental contamination within the household and how that kind of progresses, progressed or changed um, seven days later. And we use the indicator bacteria uh, Enterococcus for that analysis. Now for the process evaluation, again, they're all running alongside, so it can be a bit um, confusing, I do apologize, but we had kind of qualitative and quantitative tools. So we reviewed inventories, you know, supply chain manifests and receipts for all of the purchased components of the hygiene kit. We reviewed all of the clinical data, so looking at the epidemiological data that both MSF and the national governments and local governments had collected. We conducted structured observations, so we observed how the community health workers were demonstrating uh, the hygiene kit to, to the household contacts, how participatory that was, if they, how they answered or asked questions um, amongst the, the, the population. We then reviewed, like I said, a lot of project documents, different reports from both uh, MSF, kind of government, other NGOs, kind of as much data as we could collate to understand the situation. And then we conducted qualitative semi-structured interviews with both the, the receivers or the population who had received the kit, the implementers and other staff around them to really, again, understand everything that had happened during this response. So the results from our cohort study, uh, multivariate analysis uh, suggested evidence of a dose response relationship um, with increased use of a hygiene kit was associated with decreased risk of suspected cholera. So household contacts in the highest kit use group, so those who used it the most, according to a kind of uh, list of measures that we developed, had a 66% lower incidence of suspected cholera. And our next group down, the mid-use group, had a 53% lower incidence. And then in our low-use group, we had 22% lower incidence. And this was all compared to households who had not received a kit. Now, this wasn't a randomized control trial. So those who had not received a kit was just an implementation uh, failure. And so we had a, a group who had not received the kit in this study who we could compare the results to. Uh, similarly, for drinking water, uh, we saw drinking water contamination was also significantly reduced amongst the households in receipt of the kit. And although there wasn't a significant effect on self-reported diarrhea or food contamination, we did see the similar trend of that dose-response relationship um, to, self to cholera and a reduction in food contamination from, from those using the kit. Now, Going to the process evaluation, and this is really great following uh, just Danielle's presentation now, is really trying to understand that implementation of this, um, of this response strategy. So I'd say that successes, um, kind of key successes that we had during this um, response is that the majority of households had received a kit at the point of admission. The demonstrations were really clear, questions were aren't, like, asked and answered in really kind of clear manner and, and people really engaged with those demonstrations. Households reported that they were satisfied with the kit, um, the kit contents, and all components had been used within the kit. 
There was also really high adherence in particular to the hand washing device, so that's that bucket with tap, the jerry can and the soap. And we saw overall improvements in the wash conditions within the household, and that, that kind of came from our results from the cohort study. However, again, thinking about implementation and how we can always work to understand how to better implementation, there was a delayed, this was a delayed cholera response. The outbreak started on the 9th of August in 2018, but the team uh, didn't respond until October. There was a 16 week delay between the initial alert and then response. So really from this intervention, how much of the kind of global incidence of cholera was mitigated from this intervention, it was probably already at the tail end of the, of the epidemic. Um, additionally, there was kind of delays with the supply of kits um, and kind of that supply chain system and perhaps not having enough uh, preemptive supply within, within the country or, or locally. That's a challenge. And then of course, I already mentioned there was implementation failure where there was a limited supply of kits. So not all households received a kit. And so really kind of trying to understand how many kits you may need for a certain response is something to really think about here. Um, many of the households actually reported um, that kits were insufficient for one month use. We haven't reported the results here, but we did follow up a number of households uh, a month later and, you know, most of the soap had, had, had gone and the, there were a few issues with the kind of household sizing. So in DRC, we had households up to about 20 to 24 people, but the kits were insufficient for that, for that number of people in the household. Uh, as many of you may recall uh, or, or know already, there's, there's kind of not always high uh, use of water treatment products. And so we had really poor recall of water treatment practices um, by households. And then lastly, something that we were not obviously able to address within the MSF response is that in this area in Kasansa, in, in Kasaya Oriental, there's a really limited or inadequate availability of the water supply. So households were traveling, you know, more than more than an hour uh, there and back for their water supply. So without a sufficient water supply, the domestic hygiene practices or personal hygiene practices of the household and individuals and using the kit would therefore be um, affected. So just something um, to add there. Now, conclusions we've made um, from this evaluation and, and within MSF itself is that integration of a wash intervention or the hygiene kit at the point of admission is entirely possible. Um, it's also a really promising intervention for that really case targeted cholera control, uh, thinking about catties or courts or, or rapid response teams or kind of um, at the healthcare facility, so it can be integrated really easily. Um, there was really positive response, use and adherence to the hygiene kits by households, um, so that was really great to see. Um, but there are barriers to the timely supply, the inadequate availability and, and limited coverage of the hygiene kits. So. I think echoing some of the points that were made earlier today is that it's not necessarily about choosing what components go inside the kit and about the intervention itself. It's about identifying the ways to improve implementation and delivery. So, you know, how do we get it there faster? How do we get coverage higher? How do we make sure that we're ready within country to use this intervention um, among households? Um, I think I'm running out of time, so I'll click here. We do have some couple of papers that have been published on this, so the first, uh, number two and number three. And so I really encourage you to read them and reach out to us um, for any questions you might have. But I will stop there. Thank you very much.